Uh, hello viewers, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is shorter or uh, short sleeper syndrome, you know. Uh, but before starting, up, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel, you know. Or, uh, if you need more information, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and the link is just below this video in the description area, you know. Uh, thank you very much. Now come to the topic, what is short sleeper syndrome? You know, the short sleeper syndrome, also known as SSS or, or triple S, you know, uh, it's a sleep disorder or sleep condition which is characterized by uh, sleeping for fewer than six hours each night, you know. And uh, most adults need seven or more hours of sleep each night to feel rested in the morning, you know. And uh, uh, those with the, the short sleeper syndrome, can function normally throughout the day despite of less sleep you know and uh, they don't need to take naps or sleep more than a normal uh, to cover from lack of sleep you know and these individuals are different from those uh, short sleepers who choose to limit their sleep you know and uh, the minimal sleep requirement uh, occurs naturally for the people with this uh, SS, SS you know and they don't uh, purposely restrict or avoid sleep and uh, uh, in fact their short sleep pattern is uh, uh, the same on uh, most nights including weekends and holidays you know and the pattern of short sleep usually begins in childhood and adolescence and continues into adulthood you know and uh, uh, the scientists believe that it may be uh, due to gene mutation you know uh, and this mutation may be uh, what enables people to function well of fewer than six hours of sleep each night, you know. The next thing is what are the symptoms of the short sleeper syndrome or SSS? Now the people with triple uh, S sleep fewer than six hours each night and they are still able to function well throughout the day, you know. And they can perform well at work, at school, or at uh, uh, anywhere uh, despite the short sleep duration you know and uh, on top of that uh, they don't feel the need to take naps or uh, to sleep more on the weekends you know okay so uh, this disorder is not considered disorder sleep disordered sleep you know and you may have the sleep problem if you uh, feel fatigued throughout the day you know and you require uh, at least one nap per day you know and have trouble f uh, falling asleep at night you know or um, have difficulty staying asleep at night, you know, or wake up frequently throughout the night, you know. So, the sch uh, schedule and appointment with your doctor if you are experiencing any of the symptoms I just, I just told, you know, multiple times per week, you know. But that SS is something else, okay. Now, what are the causes of the short sleeper syndrome? We don't know. But it may be associated with the gene mutation, okay. And, uh, you know, there was a study in 2014 at the University of Pittsburgh, you know, and they found that the small percentage of the people have a short sleep gene, you know, and the study compared uh, identical twins uh, and uh, one who, uh, like, uh, who carried the short sleep gene mutation and the one who lacked this mutation, you know. So this, uh, the twins performed cognitive tasks after the same amount of sleep in the night before you know and the twin who carried the short sleep mutation uh, like outperformed their identical twin sibling who lacked the mutation you know and this change uh, in the gene allows those with the mutation to think and function normally with the less sleep if compared to the others you know and this alteration uh, was also found in a mother and daughter who routinely slept an average of 6.25 hours nightly, you know, compared to their family members who slept around 8 hours regularly. Okay, so when this uh, same gene mutation was engineered into both uh, like mice and uh, fruit flies, you know, the both species naturally slept less than their counterparts, uh, like without the gene change, you know. So the researchers note that understanding the complexity of the human sleep is not explained by a single gene.
the scientists believe multiple genes are involved you know next thing is the diagnosis you know well to make the accurate diagnosis and your doctor will likely and want to discuss your sleep habits and uh, may also give you a questionnaire to call the morningness eveningness questionnaire you know and this is specially designed to uh, um, uh, diagnose the uh, short sleeper syndrome you know. and the assessment tool contains 19 questions and uh, that help to determine when you typically perform your day to day activities and similarly the miniature chronotype questionnaire may be used to like classify your morning person or your night person even so these questions can help your doctor to evaluate your condition and your doctor might ask you to keep a sleep diary uh, uh, which you record you know like the total time slept and uh, uh, awake you know and the number of the times you wake up at the night and the symptoms during the day such as sleepiness and the frequency of naps etc you know so this way your doctor uh, it will help your doctor to diagnose and the other one is like sleep study you know which is known as a polysomnography you know it's a test and uh, it's performed in a special lab while you are fully asleep you know and your doctor will observe your sleep and record the data about your sleep patterns and check for signs and sleep disorders you know and to help make a diagnosis your doctor will measure your brain waves your oxygen levels and heart and the breathing rates you know so it will help your doctor to diagnose the problem and then another test is a uh, actigraphy now actigraphy or actigraph is an uh, is a portable device you know that you can wear on your wrist or the ankle you know and it measures the time of the day and the level of your activities and this can help to determine the aspects of sleep like total sleep time and periods of uh, wakeness you know wakefulness you know and uh, this typically lasts for one week you know and the results are often used together with the information gathered from the patient's sleep diary as well you know now once diagnosed then what are the treatment options for the Uh, short sleeper syndrome you know you know the treatment options uh, it often focuses on the ways to help your regulate the sleeping and the waking schedule you know and the human body is programmed or designed to sleep when it's uh, dark and to wake when it's light you know so if uh, you are uh, or you have disordered sleep you know Uh, you are not likely to be sleeping during these natural hours so the treatment can help by using light and darkness to restore your body's natural rhythm you know uh, the next thing is the sleep hygiene which means that uh, is a combination of tools used to restore uh, restful sleep starting these habits can be good way to maintain the healthy sleep it's often useful uh, to start for the people who have a trouble falling asleep or staying asleep you know so there are some recommendations uh, that are helpful like uh, limit the naps to 30 minutes or less you know or uh, don't use the stimulants like caffeine and uh, nicotine before bed you know avoid alcohol before bed or uh, regular daily exercise uh, avoid eating before bed you know or uh, expose yourself to natural light daily develop a night time routine you know that can include relaxation and consistent bed time you know and the room temperature okay between 60 to 67 or 50 for height or maybe 15.5 to uh, i think is 20 or 19 point something you know uh, degree centigrade you know okay so it helps you know other one is light therapy you know so what it mean is that uh, light therapy consists of using artificial light to regulate sleep and to undergo the light therapy you may have to buy a light box you know so this is a special machine that uh, produces the full spectrum light that resembles sunlight you know so uh, the light therapy can be 
particularly helpful to those who need to synchronize their sleeping and waking habits you know with their work schedule for example if you work at night shifts you know the light box can help your body experience the nights as days you know and this will help you to sleep uh, later on you know and uh, there is another one technique which is known as chronotherapy so this is a, a cognitive behavioral technique you know it requires you to follow the strict sleeping and waking schedule and the goal is to uh, retain your brain uh, so what does that retrain your brain means here yeah, that uh, you follow the schedule for one month before introducing minor changes. No naps are allowed. And you will use successive three hour delays in your bedtime for six days until you reach the proper amount of sleep, you know. Okay. So there, the, there is a tight schedule, you know, like, uh, uh, so you can visit my website to see that uh, schedule, you know. Uh, as I said, there's no specific treatment. So, uh, uh, if you have this disorder, success in the treatment depends on the type of disorder you have. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Goodbye.